I got this radio from a friend, and I have repaired several of his radios. And I thought I'd show you what I found, which just amazes me that somebody would do this uh, because uh, it's pretty amateur, but repairing a radio like this is, and the way they did it, is pretty dangerous. I mean, to have parts just floating around in it is just amazing. As you can see, I've taken the radio out of the cabinet. And I must say, this is uh, uh, kind of interesting. I did mention that this tube up here uh, should have been a 6C6. And it's now a 6A8G. And uh, yeah, that's okay, but uh, what is really interesting is here's a coil right here, and uh, it's held up by nothing but the wires connecting to it. And uh, right here, and right here, and there's a few other places. So, uh, obviously, I did not do this. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a look at the plates voltages right here. And I've went ahead and looked up all the tubes and numbered uh, which are the plates I get an idea of what's going on in this radio and this is from my free ebook right here and it has the tube sockets in it and yes I do use my own material because I don't uh, have this memorized of course if you use it enough you'll know what they are but if you haven't looked at this in a year or two, you might not be exactly sure how these count. And this is in the appendix. So I'm going to use that to find the pins where the plate is. And then I'm going to jot it down on this piece of paper. And then we'll take a look and see if we can get any meaning out of why this radio is not playing. This is from the manufacturer and of course I got this from Nostalgia Air and if you take a look at the bottom center there's a listing for voltages and it's plate to cathode 260 volts, 255, 260, and zero. That's interesting. Well, I went ahead and put uh, about 100 volts. I have it on the Variac. Put 100 volts on the radio. And this is what I read. If you take a look all the way in the upper left... We got 243 volts, and I would expect it to read low because I've, I've only got 100 volts on it, not 110 or 20. And if you go across, everything looks pretty normal, except all the way to the right. That 37 tube there, it shows that it should be a zero volts there, and a minus 10 is probably okay because I'm using a modern meter with very high impedance and that did not exist when this radio was built so that's okay and let's talk about this tube a little bit 
If you notice, in this circuit, they've got the control grid connected to the plate. That's pretty odd. Well, what they're using this 37 tube for is a diode to detect the audio from the amplitude modulated signal. And uh, they got the grid on the plate so it doesn't try to amplify anything. And they don't want to ground the grid, otherwise the tube would be turned off. So that's why it's connected to the plate. And this 37 tube is nothing more than a diode detector. Now, if, if you go down and to the left a little bit to the next 37 tube, I measured zero volts, and we're supposed to have 60 there. Now, here's a problem. So, it looks like R7 has a problem if there's voltage on the other side of R7. And I did check that while I was reading voltages, and there is voltage there. So it looks like R7 is open. So reading the plate voltages can be very, very beneficial. Thanks for watching.